Good evening. Thank you for being part of this Lenten journey on Wednesdays as we looked at um, Jonah, that fish story. We will conclude that portion of this whole series on Monday, Thursday, which is next week. So next week is Holy Week. So we have Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. and then a Good Friday service on, on Friday at 7 p.m. So with that, I um, please ask you to please turn to page two for the call to worship and I invite you to stand. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord, hear my voice. In the tombs of death. <coughs> beneath our grave clothes. You see our beloved ones. With our tears. Our mingled girl. We wait for you, O Lord. And in your word we hope. For we trust that you will call us. Please join with me in the confession. Gracious God, we confess that we bind and entomb others and that our own lives are marked by grave clothes and tombs. Forgive us for our death-dealing ways. Call us by name. Unbind us from all that is life-destroying so that cross-marked and spirit-sealed we might live your abundant, resurrected life now through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, has come to us in Jesus, who by his holy cross has redeemed the world. Buried with Christ by baptism into death, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Cross marked and spirit sealed, you are raised to new life. Almighty God, strengthen you in faith to live each day renewed in God's call for your life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of creation and compassion, you promise to finish the work you have begun in us. Until that time, we remain underway sojourners on a long trek. Help us to recognize that you are both our destination and our most faithful companion, reminding us who you are and what you have given us and how we are to love. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Jonah, verse 4. But this was displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out from the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort so that Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came the next day, Joseph, Joseph was, Jonah was very happy about the bush. God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked what, that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labor, and which you did not grow. I came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, to which there are more than 120,000 persons, who do not know their right hand from their left, and, so, and also many animals? Our God of creation and compassion, promises to finish 
the work God has begun in us. Until that time, we remain underway, sojourners on a long trek. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us recognize that God is both our destination and our most faithful companion in that journey, reminding us who God is and what God has given to us, especially in Jesus' death and resurrection, and then how we are to love others. Today, um, Wendell just read the final and fourth chapter of Jonah. You would think that chapter 3 would be a fitting ending to the story. Everything turned out well. But Jonah does not see Nineveh as God sees Nineveh. And like every human being, Jonah is unfinished. When God looks upon Nineveh, God's heart is full of compassion. Jonah, however, still, after chapter 3, hopes for its destruction. Remember, Nineveh is the capital of Assyria, which is Israel's longtime and historic enemy. This is why Jonah runs the other direction when God calls Jonah to be a prophet to Nineveh. Jonah knows that God is merciful and forgiving and full of grace. And Jonah knows God will do the same, even for his arch enemy. Out of the depths of that fear, Jonah flees from his call by God. And note this, that not following God's call is a sin. It's a broken relationship with God. Not only for Jonah, but also for us. God is persistent and faithful in trying to bring out repentance in Jonah, just as God was persistent and faithful in trying to bring out repentance in Nineveh. This Lenten journey for each of us individually and as a congregation similarly is never finished. We are always and at all times called to repentance before God and neighbor. God remains by our side, though, even when our external obedience stands in conflict with that internal condition we know from God that's in our hearts. God has compassion for all creatures, human and non-human alike. Yet, in chapter 4, Jonah has trouble seeing this. In my reading and meditating in this devotional book, Unfinished, that, this Lenten devotional that we shared in our Lenten series, I, I, I had it upside down, sorry. <laughs> I, I really like the March 21st um, reflection by Glory Godwin, a, a, a student at Concordia College. So even though if you've read that already, or maybe you have not, I think it's um, something for us to ponder tonight. So let me share that. And I quote, Jonah was not so happy with God because God forgave the people of Nineveh. Why send me? Well, you knew that they were going to repent and you will not destroy them. That's Jonah in chapter 4. Would we not also be angry if we knew God forgave the people that we do not think deserve forgiveness? Hmm. Well, I think we all do not deserve God's forgiveness. And this is where we see and are reminded of how merciful God is. And hence, this is the purpose of Jesus coming to earth. Jesus came to save us from our sin-sick souls and to bring us to God's glorious light. Not because we are worthy, but because God is merciful and graceful. This is the same lesson God teaches Jonah as he's angry, because God did spare Nineveh. And yet, Jonah pitied the plant that was made in the night and died overnight. So God said to Jonah, shouldn't I pity the city of Nineveh? That's, keep in mind, these are people that God created also. The city of Nineveh, who did not know their right hand from their left, God says, shouldn't I have pity on them? You had pity on a bush? 
So God showed care to the people of Nineveh. And they did repent and turn from their ways and were saved in chapter 3. We are no different than the people of Nineveh. Let us all use this time to turn back to God and repent, for God's mercy and grace are sufficient. And God will forgive us. Let us walk the walk of Jesus and rest all of our burdens at the cross. For Jesus came so that we may be free and be free indeed. End of quote. Our lives uh, as disciples of Christ are unfinished in this whole life journey. And yet Jesus is faithful to walk with us to, to discover God's call for us in the not yet of the future. From the preaching resources for this um, Joan of that fish story, I share these words to close to tonight's message. In this world, all of us are unfinished. Every vocational responsibility we have to our family, friends, neighbors, creation, represent an opportunity to grow in love, excellence, and faithfulness. We do not undertake that effort alone, though. God accompanies us, helping us each step of the way to see others as God sees them. To how God sees Nineveh, not through the lenses of spite and anger, but rather of compassion and mercy. And we are called to do the same. So with that, let's pray. God of creation and compassion, you promise to finish the work you have begun in us. Until that time, we remain underway sojourners on a long trek. Help us to recognize that you are both our destination and our most faithful companion who walks with us. Reminding us who you are, what you have given us, and how we are to love. Amen. Hymn 802, or on page 4, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus, I invite you to stand.
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and, and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and your whole, our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, to you, O Lord. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Remember the poor.